morning and thank you for joining with us as we worship on this fifth Sunday of Lent. We continue with the theme of worship in the wilderness and today we focus on a truth speaking journey. We begin with a prayer. God, may we come to you dry, discouraged, feeling frail or powerless, but we come believing that you have the words of eternal life. Speak to our dry bones. May your word and your spirit give us life and empower us to speak truth into this world you love. Amen. Those dry bones get everywhere. In the workplaces and job centres. In the homes and high streets. In the schools and colleges. Those dry bones get everywhere. In the shops and sports arenas. In the places of entertainment and the centres of leisure. Those dry bones get everywhere, sprinkling their lifeless dust, sapping energy and draining hope, confusing minds and sowing discontent. Those dry bones get everywhere, but so does the breath of God. And so does the hopeful life of the Spirit. Gentle and powerful, rushing and meandering, transforming radically and little by little resurrecting, encouraging, stirring, comforting. Those dry bones get everywhere but so does the breath of God. We join in a word of prayer. Hold the Bible in your open palms. Generous God, the Bible is your gift to us. We choose to receive your story with thanks. Hold the Bible in front of your mouth. Providing God, your word is daily bread for us. Help us to hunger for your words of life. Hold the Bible over your heart. Challenging God, your word is living and active. Open us up to receive your truth in our hearts. Hold the Bible behind one ear. Comforting God, your word sings out your everlasting love. Tune our ears to the frequency of your song. Hold the Bible in front of you, pointing the way. Guiding God, your word is a light to our path. May we reflect on your ways and then walk in them. Amen. All right. 
Our Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel 37, 1-14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all round them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath into you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. When listening prophets dare to speak, love the True prophets challenge 
Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, 4 to 11. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendour. And he said to him, All these I will give to you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly the angels came and waited upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have explored in our series the wilderness worship that God can lead us into. Things like silence, fasting and solitude. We also thought about sorrow in the desert, the sacrifice Jesus has made to bear our suffering and the sacrifices that we are called to make in response. Lots of these ideas Picture wilderness as a spiritual state within our hearts. In addition to these, you might feel also that the world around you is something of a wilderness. We do live in an increasingly secular society. Christian voices can seem more marginalised than ever. Christian values may not be shared by your family, your work colleagues, or by the people who run the newspapers, TV stations and websites that you look at. It can feel like we're bombarded with temptations to live in ways that are the opposite of God's best for us, and we may struggle to resist. Do you ever feel like a lone voice in the wilderness? How can we be inspired by Isaiah and by John the Baptist all those years later to be a voice of one calling in the wilderness? Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. The Israelites' 40 years in the wilderness was a defining period for God's people and a lasting dem demonstration of God's character towards them. His faithfulness to them during that time was a, a theme that they would return to again and again. In times of crisis, they would bring their mind to their experience in the desert and use it as a lens to see how God might act in their present troubles. It was certainly the case when Israel was taken to exile in Babylon in 597 BC. There could have been no greater crisis than to be ripped from the promised land, and ten years later to have, have the city and its temple destroyed. God's people were distraught. And yet prophets like Jeremiah, Isaiah and Ezekiel tried to remind the people that even in the desert of exile, they could still rely on the God who had brought them through the wilderness. In Ezekiel's vision, the people are not simply hungry and thirsty in the desert of exile. They are dead. Their bodies have rotted away and only their bones are left on the dry, dusty desert floor. Not the nicest image but one that represents the extent of Israel's despair at that time. Look at verse 11. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the bones of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Does that image of exile relate to, this, to the despair that you sometimes feel about the, about the world around you? about our society and the church that seems increasingly marginalised and ignored. Does it resonate with you at a time of Covid lockdowns 
when our lives are curtailed, our businesses closed, our horizons limited to the walls of our homes. If it resonates with you at all, then you can take heart from what happens through Ezekiel. God calls Ezekiel to speak to the dead bones. He speaks God's creative, restorative word, and the dead bones come together, muscles and flesh grow back over them. He speaks again, and God's life-giving spirit comes and brings life to the dead. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet a vast army. The dejected, dead people of Israel are resurrected. They become an army, a people who will reoccupy their promised land. It won't be the same as before. It will be new, but it will be according to God's word and his spirit to do what no other power, politician, product or programme could do, bring new and true life. When this pandemic comes to an end, or at least when we are able to get back to more normal living, we must breathe new lives into the dry bones of our pre-COVID lives. There's little doubt that things will not be the same as they were before. There's always the temptation to look back at the security of what we know. But as Moses led the Israelites from slavery in Egypt to the Promised Land, there can be no looking back. We have to move forward and to do that, we need to know God's word and we need to speak it in the power of his Holy Spirit. And this means we need to reg regularly read our Bible, soaking ourselves in it, trying to understand it better. It means speaking God's truth in love. It means praying with prophetic faith, speaking out God's word with the trust that it will be effective. It means reminding ourselves of God's promises whenever we get dejected. And as Jesus shows us, it means using God's word to respond to temptation. When Jesus is led into the desert, it seems he also understands his 40 days in the light of Israel's 40 years in the wilderness of wandering. When we look at Deuteronomy 8, we see that the reason God gives for Israel's wilderness wanderings was to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Each time Jesus is tempted by the devil, he responds by quoting a word of God. In fact, he even uses scriptures from Deuteronomy which refer to Israel's wilderness testing. So Jesus stands where Israel fell. And in doing so, he shows us Christians, the new Israel, how we can also stand in the face of temptation. We do not have a specific 40 years or 40 days of temptation. For us, each day holds an opportunity to obey or disobey God's best for our lives. What kinds of sins are you tempted to commit in your everyday life? What truths from God's word can you speak to resist those temptations? As we do this, we are obeying the call of Isaiah to be voices calling in the wilderness. We can be those who proclaim to the world, the grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. Shout it louder, O Jerusalem. Shout it and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. Amen.
claim to her, your service is now complete. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Proclaim to her, your sin has now been paid for. A responsive prayer. This is a prayer that helps us to confess those times we've not engaged with God as we could, and it commits us to living by God's word in the future. We pray. Father, when I come to you hungry, perhaps it's because I haven't fed properly from your word. Word of God, feed me. 
there are times when I lose my way. I feel like I'm going round in circles, unsure of my next step. Word of God, lead me. When I'm stuck in repetitive habits, I know that you have more for me outside of this me mediocrity. Word of God, shake me. Parts of my heart are cold towards the world you love. Fill me with your compassion. Word of God, break me. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Feed me with your wisdom. Lead me with your love. Shake me with your reality. Break me with your perspective. And rebuild me with your Holy Spirit's power. Amen. Oh, oh, oh.
We close this morning with our sending prayer. Holy Spirit, breathe through us so that we might speak out words of light and life where we see only shadows and death. Send us into this world of exile with the promise of a world renewed and the power of our risen Saviour, in whose name we pray. Amen.